With the third quarter of the season in the books, it's time to grade the Buffalo Bills performance to this point, and we're focusing in on the offense today on Locked On Bills. You are Locked On Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I'm your host of Locked On Bills. want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate y'all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Well, folks, it's time to self scout. It's the bye week, but it's also the end of the third quarter of the season. And if you've been with us throughout the course of the season, you know. That after each quarter of the season, I like to take a step back and really reflect on the trends of the team and evaluate and talk about what's going well, what's not going well, and also provide the data to support uh, those opinions, right? So we're going to have a meaty conversation today, a lot of information thrown your way. So let's do it. And we'll start by just having a general statement on the third quarter of the season for the Buffalo Bills. Not a good stretch. They went one and three. The first quarter of the season, they went three and one. The second quarter of the season, two and two. The third quarter of the season, one and three. You had a 24 to 18 loss to the Bengals, 24 to 22 loss to the Broncos, 32 to six win over the Jets, and a 37 to 34 loss to the Eagles. Some heartbreaking losses in there, some key um, tiebreakers that you didn't get. Uh, looking at the Broncos tiebreaker that you lost. So, some problems here in the third quarter, despite some positives as well. And I think more of those positives will be revealed on our conversation today as it relates to the offense and what we saw really over the last couple of games with Joe Brady taking over the operation. So let's get into it. We'll talk about the passing offense, the rushing offense, situational stuff, Josh Allen, all kinds of stuff. But just generally speaking on the offense, uh, So far, the Bills are averaging 27.3 points per game, uh, which is top five in the NFL. Very good scoring offense, and they average 383 total yards per game. Now, lasering in on the passing offense, Uh, 261 passing yards per game. That's been pretty close throughout the course of the season. 253 in Q1, 263 in Q2, 261 in Q3. Seven yards per attempt. Sack percentage is 3.3%. That's very, very good. Second best in the entire NFL. And uh, it's a number that's actually getting better throughout the course of the season. 6.3 in the first four, 4% in the second quarter, and now it's down to 3.3%. Pressure percentage is 34.7%. That's also outstanding. Pass protection has been really good. Yards after catch per completion is 5.1 yards after catch per completion. And that's a number that jumped back up about a half a yard from where it was in the second quarter. And yards after catch percentage of yards is actually really good. 48.6% of Josh Allen's passing yards are after the catch. And over the last four games, it's 54.5%. So you've really seen really a nice uptick in yards after catch compared to where it was a little bit of a a lull there in in the second quarter of the season. Here's a big one. Drop rate. Drop rate has come up. It's at 3.2% for the season. And over the last four games, it's at 6.1%. So when you parse it out, the first six games of the season, the Bills had a drop rate of 1.7%. Over the last four, it's at 6.1% for a season average of 3.2%. So drop percentage is not going in a good direction, up 88% in the last four games. Now, when it comes to Josh Allen, Josh Allen's completion percentage, 68.1%. That has steadily come down throughout the course of the season, which is to be expected. It started off through the first four games, 74.8%, down to 71.7% quarter two, 68.1% quarter three. Still very, very good. 
but it, it set a high bar earlier in the season. Yards per game, right at about 270, like we already mentioned, 267.8. Touchdown percentage, 5.5% of Josh Allen's throws are touchdowns. Passer rating is 95.8. His interception percentage is 3%. His passer rating under pressure is 73.5. This is a number that has come down throughout the course of the season. Q1, 97.3 passer rating under pressure. Q2, 79. And then Q3, 73.5. Same thing with, with his completion percentage under pressure, which is at 50.4%. And the trajectory there is 61.3, down to 52, down to 50.4%. Play action percentage, another number that is not going in the direction I want it to. Uh, it's at 23.6% for the season. If you've listened to me, you know I want play action percentage to be north of 30%. Um, Josh Allen's passer rating with play action is still outstanding, 122.4. And so why do I want play action to be a big part of the passing offense? Well, Josh Allen's really good at it. That's where his best production comes. So I want to do the thing that he's great at the most if that makes a lot of sense, or at least a high percentage of times. Screen percentage, 7%. That's been pretty close all year. They've actually had some success with yards per attempt in the screen game. 5.1 yards per attempt so far this season, and that's up. It's been up basically a yard almost uh, throughout the course of the season. It's trending in the right direction. Deep percentage, 12.5%. That's where Josh Allen's kind of lived this season on throws 20 yards or more down the field. His passer rating on deep throws is 84, and that's up a little bit. Last quarter, it was 76.3. His average time to throw is 2.87. He hangs out around 2.9. That's pretty consistent. And his average depth of target is 8.5. It was 8.7 coming into the third quarter. So a lot of the same as it relates to Josh Allen and his production, uh, but you're seeing his pressure metrics come down a little bit, uh, but still a, a good level of production. So what's going well when it comes to this Buffalo Bills passing offense? Well, I'd say really over the last two games, you've seen Joe Brady's influence, and I've really enjoyed the spacing of the passing game, the options that Josh Allen has when you you know watch the progressions and you see the route combinations. It just looks really good right now under Joe Brady, and I think that's been a major boost to the passing offense and how it can be productive and even more productive moving forward. I think you've seen a good – uh, job of Joe Brady using motion over the last couple of games to help create that space and make things even easier for Josh Allen. Pass protection has been outstanding all season long. The Bills, one of the fewest teams in terms of pressure rate, one of the lowest amounts of sacks in the entire NFL. I mean, that has been one of the best stories of the entire season has been the Bills and their pass protection. You've also seen an uptick in yards after catch, especially in the last two games. And I think when you highlight individuals, Khalil Shakir and Dalton Kincaid continue to um, really be productive for this offense. And you've seen the running back involvement um, go up in the passing game for the offense of late. Uh, what's really fascinating to me is when you look at the Bills receiving production over the last four games, there's some very fascinating things. Uh, Khalil Shakir is the Bills' number one receiver over the last four games, 243 yards. Number two is Stefan Diggs at 221. But what's fascinating about Khalil Shakir is is that he's the leading receiver, but he's fifth in targets. Diggs and Kincaid both have 31. Gabe Davis has 19. James Cook, 17. Khalil Shakir, 15. And he has 11 catches for 243 yards. Uh, so that's pretty fascinating. Um, so it's loved, I love seeing Shakir and Kincaid really eat a good chunk of this opportunity in the passing game up. I think you can go to Diggs a little bit more. I think the Bills have whether it's been the corners that he's faced or just the other options that have been productive, they've kind of gotten away from Diggs a little bit over the last four games. And so I'm looking for him to kind of ramp up over the final stretch of the season. Now, where can things be better when it comes to the passing offense? The first thing that stands out to me is drops. Drops have went up significantly. Like I mentioned, 1.7% in the first eight games of the season. And uh, over the last four, it's been 6.1%. And you've got some I mean, everyone's been a problem to some extent, but Gabe Davis, 20% drop rate. James Cook, 11.8% drop rate. Um, even Diggs, 9.5%. That's too high. Kincaid, 7.1%. Shakir, 8.3%. Everyone's been a little bit too high when it comes to uh, drops. Uh, the vertical passing game, I still think that there's some meat on the bone there. Uh, I think they're, you know, I, I like that Josh Allen isn't necessarily big play hunting, but sometimes 
with a quarterback like Josh Allen, I just I just anticipate the vertical stuff to be a little bit more efficient than it's been. And then I want more play action frequency when it comes to this passing offense. So there's there's kind of the overview on Josh Allen, the passing offense, the receiving distribution has been really, really fascinating. Um, and so I give this a B, uh, and that's my grade for it uh, so far. I think it's performing at an above average level, uh, but I still think there's opportunities for it to be even better. But what I've seen over the last two games gives me a lot of hope for what the last five games of the season can look like. All right, we're going to talk all about the rushing offense and situational football here in just a moment. But folks, I got to tell you about Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the funnest, most exciting, easiest way to play daily fantasy sports. The format is incredible. It's just you against the numbers. It's not you against thousands of other players, including pros and including sharks. It's just you against numbers. Here's what you do. You select two or more players. You pick more or less in their projected stats and you place your entry. That's it. It doesn't take long. Picks can be made in under a minute. And then when you win, the withdrawals are super, super quick. I love all these sports right now. And what's even really cool about prize picks is it's not just one sport. Like you can pick some, some over unders or more or less on uh, football. You can do basketball, college sports. Like you can layer it all together and uh, create some really, really fun entries. So check it out. Uh, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, folks, let's talk about this Bills rushing offense over the last four games. Uh, they're averaging 122 yards per game. And that's been pretty consistent up a little bit. It was 113 uh, through quarter two. Now it's back up to 122 through quarter three. Yards per carry, 4.4. It uh, was 4.3 last quarter. Missed tackles force per attempt remains really low. 0.14 missed tackles force per attempt. That's 30th in the NFL. The Bills are not doing a good job of forcing missed tackles when they carry the football. The stuff percentage is really, really good. 37.9. That's the best in the entire NFL by 2%. And stuff percentage just basically means a failed run where you don't get a certain percentage of the yards on first down or you don't convert on third and short. Like it's 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 a great way to measure unsuccessful runs. And the Bills have the fewest amount of unsuccessful runs in the NFL by a good clip, uh, by a 2% gap over number two. Yards after contact per attempt, 2.34. Um, still a pretty modest number there. Uh, but yards before contact per attempt is at 1.55, which is sixth best in the entire NFL. And it's been about at that at that rate throughout the course of the season. So the Bills rushing offense has been productive, but I still think that there's some areas where, where it can be better. And so we'll talk about that. But first, let's talk about what's going well. And I mentioned the production. I mean, you had some really, really good rushing performances over the last four games. I mean, 173 yards against Philly. Keep in mind, Philly had the number one rush defense in the entire NFL uh, in terms of yards per game allowed. So 173 on them is a big deal. You got 155 on the Jets. We all know about the Jets uh, defense and 192 against Denver. And so you look at this production and you see that three of your top five most productive rushing games have been in the last four, including your most productive rushing game of the season against the Jets and your third most productive rushing game of the season against the Philadelphia Eagles. And so you've you've done well. Um, and the distribution here has been pretty interesting. James Cook, still your leading ball carrier with 51 attempts for 245 yards. That's 4.8 yards per carry. Then it's been Latavius Murray, 30 carries for 137 yards. That's 4.6 yards per carry. But then Josh Allen, uh, 149 yards rushing in the last four games. 5.7 yards per carry with four touchdowns. And so I think a big part of your uptick in rushing success has been, well, first of all, Cook and Murray are still performing at a at a at a high level. They're both, you know, you're you're both over four and a half yards per carry. But Josh Allen as well. He has 100, 149 yards in the last four games. In the first eight games of the season, he had 189. So again, 189 yards for Josh Allen rushing in the first eight games of the season. 149 in the last four. So Josh Allen contributing here has really helped this rushing offense. So you've been productive with your top three ball carriers, Cook, Allen, and Murray. And um, 
the uptick from Josh Allen has been nice. And I think what we've seen from Ty Johnson in a small sample size, really just the last couple of games that he's gotten a chance to contribute, he's been really good as well. And what I've appreciated about Ty Johnson is it feels like he's doing a really good job of not allowing that first guy to get him down. And we talked about where this Bills offense rushing the ball can be better, and we'll talk about a little bit more, is, is missed tackles forced and winning after contact. Ty Johnson's really done a nice job of that in his small sample size to this point of the season. I think the Bills are also, when it comes to what's going well with the rushing offense, I think a lot about these blended concepts. Now, they still have their core staples of what they like to do running the football. They love that tackle wrap play. They love duo. They love pin and pull. But I think there's a, a nice blended uh, scheme here where it, it's still, it still it skews heavily towards man or gap blocking run schemes, but you're seeing a little bit more zone of late, particularly when they get the ball to James Cook. And so I think that has been helpful. Now, I've been critical of the Bills rushing offense in the past for trying to be too multiple with blended run schemes, uh, but I think what they did a good job of this year is they started off very, very gap-oriented, and then they allowed that to establish itself before they started to really lean into a little bit more zone. And I think that's been a good progression as opposed to trying to be both from the outset. I think that's gotten them in trouble in the past. Um, and the other thing that's going well for the Bills rushing offense is run blocking. They've done a good job run blocking. I mean, the O line's been really good, whether it's pass blocking or run blocking. I look at this yards before contact number, and they're getting 1.55 yards before contact, uh, sixth best in the NFL. And I talked about the stuff percentage being number one in the NFL. Those are offensive line stats. The Bills offensive line is getting displacement. They're getting movement. They're not whiffing. They're sound in their assignments. And it's giving these ball carriers a lot of opportunity. Now, I would like to see these ball carriers do a little bit more. Uh, I think they can win post-contact, force more missed tackles. Um, but you 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 look at this, this run scheme and the run blocking execution, and it's been really, really good. Now, where can the Bills rushing offense be better? Well, I I've already I've spoiled my own talking point here. Post contact and forcing missed tackles. They're they're bottom of the league in forced missed tackles per run. Uh, I think they take a little bit of time sometimes to get in the groove of the game, particularly James Cook. Uh, I think James Cook has been really productive this year. I really like James Cook. There's a lot of dynamics that I appreciate about his skill set, but there's too often early in games he's twinkle toes. And I'm not just being a victim of the moment for that one play against the Eagles where he decided to go out of bounds like he's C.J. Spiller. I'm talking about just regularly this season. James Cook starts, and I, I think he wants to kind of pop a big one. And sometimes you just have to get the grimy three yards, right? You got to stick your nose down and, and be physical and run with some conviction and run with some pad level and get those yards. And then as you do that, the bigger plays will come throughout the course of the game. So I think J uh, James Cook starting games with a little bit more urgency and not looking to pop a big one early is going to make him a more consistent player. Um, and so, yeah, no, no early game twinkle toes from James Cook. We got to get that out of here. The other thing that's important for us to bring up here in this run game conversation, and particularly the last quarter of the season, is you actually saw your first two running back fumbles happen in the third quarter, both by James Cook prior to was it was the first one of the Cincy game, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the maybe Denver, I can't remember which game was the, was the first one. But the point that I'm making is prior to this quarter, the first eight games of the season, you had zero running back fumbles. You had two in the fourth quarter. And so, you know, that's something that obviously you want to be corrected. James Cook went from his first carry in the NFL being a fumble to no fumbles until whatever game it was uh, that he recently put one on the turf and, and he fumbled twice in that game. Uh, so, yeah, just. Wanted to point that out and kind of got to get back to not fumbling, right? It's it's kind of a non-negotiable. You got to take care of the football uh, when you carry it. So I give the Bills rushing offense a B minus. Um, it's productive and um, trending in a, trending in a good direction. You know, I, I actually I think I graded it as a C for the last quarter. So we're I think we're doing better here when it comes to running the football, and I think. Josh Allen's involvement and even more Ty Johnson are, are a couple of things here that um, intrigues me the rest of the way. I, I've had some questions about Leonard Fournette. I don't care about Leonard Fournette. He could stay on the on the practice squad for the whole season and it wouldn't bother me one bit, especially if Leonard Fournette being activated means less Ty Johnson. 
Leonard Fournette's just a very limited player with vision issues, ball security issues. He's just a big guy that can run in a straight line. Like, there's not a whole lot of appeal there. He does have some pass blocking ability. But I'm not interested in Leonard Fournette if that means less, less Ty Johnson, to be completely candid with you. I think there's just a whole lot more that Ty Johnson brings to a team as a third running back. So a B- minus for the Bills rushing offense here in the third quarter of the season. All right, we're going to talk situational football here in just a moment. Set the course uh, for the remainder of our content here before the Bills play the Chiefs. And um, all that's coming up here for you here in just a moment. But look, first, first I got to tell you about DoorDash. I am obsessed with DoorDash. The convenience is simply unmatched, right? We're all busy. We're all trying to figure out when we're going to get to the grocery store, what we're going to make for dinner, when we're going to have time to make dinner. Well, look, DoorDash can handle that for you. They'll bring you groceries right to your front door, just like you picked them up off the shelf for yourself. They'll bring you food to your front door if you want to order from your favorite local restaurants. It's amazing. I, I do that all the time. I, I love to get um, Mexican food from my favorite uh, place down the street here, El Vallarta. Best tacos, best uh, chips and salsa. Uh, it's phenomenal. And my daughter loves the macaroni and cheese. And if you have a toddler, you know where there's the good macaroni and cheese. Then you got to get that for the kids, right? They they love it. So uh, love DoorDash. They, they bring that to you. And you don't have to worry about finding time to make dinner or getting to the grocery store. They handle that for you. I got a deal here for you. Get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend 15 bucks or more on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCK23. Subject to change, terms apply. Don't forget to use code LOCK23 for 50% off up to a $10 value when you order on DoorDash and you spend $15 or more. Subject to change, terms apply. Folks, as the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to enjoy this NFL season even more. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, let's close things out here by talking situational football, and then I'll also give you the content plan here on the podcast uh, for the rest of the week here as I know we're in a little bit of a weird time with the buy and all that type of stuff. So I want to let you know exactly what you can expect. But let's talk situational offense first. Um, offensive score percentage, so the percentage of drives that result in a score, 43.1%. Uh, that's fourth best in the NFL. So as frustrating as the Bills' season has been, statistically they're really good in some of the most critical areas including scoring right they score a lot of points they're still doing that at a high clip uh turnover percentage 15.4 percent and it's been an issue all season long uh and it's actually not getting better so your your turnover percentage through the first quarter was 11.9 percent of drives ending in a turnover quarter two went up to 14.3 percent quarter three up to 15.4 percent so taking care of the football Still an issue for the Bills, even if some of it is random and unfortunate. They just they can't turn it over as much as they do. The Bills' third down conversion percentage rate is unbelievable, 49.7%. That's number one in the NFL. I'm pretty sure it's been number one in the NFL all season long. The Bills are very, very good on third downs, and they're very good at scoring touchdowns in the red zone. They're also best in the league at that, 67.4% of trips to the red zone end in touchdowns. And so... When it comes to scoring points, converting third downs, and scoring touchdowns when they get into the red zone, the Bills are right at the top of the entire NFL. But, of course, the bad side of this when we discuss situational football is turnovers. Turnovers continue to be a problem. So what's going well? All of it, right? I mean, they score, they get third down conversions, and they convert to the red zone. Where it can be better? Obviously turnovers. And looking at this particular four-game stretch, Four turnovers against Denver, absolutely killers. That's the big black eye here in this quarter. You had two against Cincinnati, which are also killers. But then the last two games have been a lot better. You had one each against the Jets and the Bengals, and um, or excuse me, the Jets and the Eagles. And you know, I mean, Josh Allen threw an interception against the Eagles. He dropped back the pass like sixty times, and had one, you know, one turnover. Like that's just going to happen. Um, and then the Jets, they got him on that. Um, they they got they got a, had a turnover against the Jets as well. So it, there was the end of half, right? The, the like the kind of a cheesy interception to throw. 
Uh, so it's been a lot better, really. I mean, I guess you can look at it and say one over the last two games, but they had two. So what is my grade here when it comes to situational? I'll give it a B plus. I mean, it's an A when it comes to score percentage, turnover, excuse me, third down percentage of red zone, touchdown percentage, but like a D when it comes to turnover percentage. Uh, I like to do this at the end of these conversations, players I'm looking for more out of uh, down the stretch, and then guys that are on the Pro Bowl path. And again, this will be exclusive to offense. I know in the past we've done offense and defense on the same day, uh, but we don't have to do it like that. We have a little extra time here with the bye. Players that I'm looking for more out of down the stretch here. I got three. Uh, Osiris Torrance, I mentioned this at some point recently. I think he's hit a bit of a wall. Um, this season where I think he started out a lot cleaner than he's been lately. Some pass protection uh, challenges where his lateral quickness has been really challenged in addition to a couple of run game uh, problems as well. But overall, really solid rookie season for Osiris Torrance. But I think you've seen a decline in his play as we've kind of gotten into this stretch of the season. Uh, and you know, we talk about that rookie wall like right now. Uh, in the world of college football, the season's over, right? Like there's uh, conference championship games this weekend, and then it's bowl games. Um, for the NFL, you got five more to play plus the playoffs, right? It's just a different situation in terms of how it taxes your body. Um, and so hopefully this bye week comes at a good time for Osiris Torrance, and he's ready to ramp it up down the stretch. Uh, Gabe Davis, um, Gabe Davis always frustrates me, it seems like, but I think he's had a particularly poor stretch. I mean, if it wasn't for that Eagles game, he would have had nearly a non, like just a completely nothing quarter of the season contributing in the passing game. I know he's a good run blocker. Like, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Uh, but, you know, you're a wide receiver. I want you to catch the football. Over this course of the season, he's had 19 targets, eight receptions. That's a reception percentage of 42%. That is terrible. That is terrible. 116 yards, did have the receiving touchdown. 20% drop rate, and Josh Allen's passer rating when throwing the ball to Gabe Davis over the last four games is 50.4. Like, got to have more, Gabe. Got to have more. And I don't want more volume. Like, I definitely am not asking for more targets for Gabe Davis. But, dude, when the ball's thrown to you, it, the results got to be better. The results have got to be better. So, Osiris Torrance, Gabe Davis. And then another player that I have down, and not necessarily for performance issues, but I just want to see more of, and that's Ty Johnson. I think what Joe Brady has been able to unlock from Ty Johnson the last couple of games is exciting to me. I think he's the perfect third running back, and um, I wouldn't hesitate to you know sprinkle him in and give him more opportunities down the stretch, or at least kind of what we've seen from him over the last two games. Guys that are on the Pro Bowl path, I think there's three players like right now that I think should be Pro Bowlers for the Bills on offense. Josh Allen, I mean, enough said, leads the league in touchdowns. Yeah, he leads the league in uh, turnovers, but he also leads the league in touchdowns, and the Bills – lead the league in fewest percentage of drives that are punts. So, you know, I probably I, like it should be mandatory. If you say that Josh Allen leads the league in turnovers, you should also have to say that he leads the league in touchdowns and he leads the league in an offense that punts the ball on the fewest percentage of drives. Like, be honest about it. Don't just cherry pick the one thing that you want to point out. Stefan Diggs, despite not necessarily being a super productive quarter for him, uh, still one of the most productive players in the entire NFL. I think he's definitely on a Pro Bowl path. And then Deion Dawkins. I've said multiple times this season he's playing his best football. I think they've really unlocked something with this tackle wrap play uh, that, I mean, I don't really see a lot of teams running it besides the Bills. And they they get Deion Dawkins pulling um, long poles, I don't know, like seven, eight times a game, maybe even more. Um, and he's been feasting. He's been unbelievable this year. I think he's had his best season of his career, and he's had a great career. So those are the guys on the Pro Bowl path. Uh, real quick, the content that you can expect from me uh, between now and the time the Bills play the Chiefs. Here's what I have lined up. So this is our self-scouting offense episode. Tomorrow, you'll get self-scouting on defense. Over the weekend, on uh, I'll do a herd mentality episode. I plan on publishing that on Sunday. Then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I have guests. We're going to talk to Greg, Greg Thompson. We do this every year on the bye week. Greg Thompson and I, we're going to have a big picture roster management conversation and then Bruce Nolan on Tuesday, Nate Geary on Wednesday, uh, where we're going to talk. Um, I don't want to say offense and defense because we might we might like cross pollinate a little bit there, but just kind of big picture stuff with them uh, that stands out and, and talking points that I want to have. And it, it won't be like an interview. I, I understand this. I'm bringing them on to have a discussion with me. It's not like, hey, I'm going to sit and ask them questions. Like sometimes that'll happen, like I did with Coach Alexander, or I did with uh, with 
Keith Sanchez and Joe Brady or Ben Solak on Josh Allen. I'm bringing them on to have a conversation with me. So uh, they're guests, but it's not just an interview of them. We're going to talk Bills together. Uh, So looking forward to that. And then we're going to have the Chiefs crossover preview on Thursday morning. Uh, Chiefs full primer on Friday. And then, of course, final thoughts, injuries, and predictions on Friday night slash Saturday morning. So a lot of content coming your way here between now and the time the Bills face the Kansas City Chiefs. So don't miss anything. Make sure that you're subscribed. We'd love it if you took a second to rate, review, and share the podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Go Bills. And I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow.